What's going on YouTube? Jason Whitaker, DIY Dad, and today <clears throat> we are going to talk about a Facebook Marketplace find um, that I have uh, got right here, and it's a Rhino 60 by 48 backboard uh, basketball goal. So uh, <clears throat> let's dive into um, what it is that I found and how I installed it and how you can do the same. A little backstory on um, why I was looking for a basketball goal. So I have uh, two older kids that are nine and uh, five years old. I have a daughter that's one, another baby on the way. So uh, my kids are super, super active in sports. And uh, this is the first year that uh, they're going to be playing organized basketball. Well, here in Indiana, that's a pretty big deal. So in order to get my kids as much practice as possible, I want to get them a, a quality goal. When I was looking online, uh, looking at the you know the big box stores, um, a, a, a robust basketball system uh, was going to cost you know anywhere from fifteen hundred to three thousand um, dollars. That's that's a pretty hefty uh, price tag. So what I started doing was I started searching around on Facebook Marketplace, and I was searching for about two months because um, I wanted something that was a little bit more robust. I, I wanted something that could handle the elements. I wanted something that could handle the win, and I wanted a good quality goal for my kids uh, to practice on. So uh, after about two months of searching, uh, and searching, you know, <laughs> I searched pretty extensively. I was looking at you know the big box stores uh, sales and and everything else, and um, I eventually landed on um, another goal, which was a gorilla goal. It was a uh, 72 inch backboard, um, but that sale, they, they, they kind of sold it um, beneath me uh, when I was in route. Uh, they, they sold it to somebody else with a, a cash app, and I was showing up with cash. So um, they sold it uh, beneath me, but I was able to get a, uh, another goal uh, right here uh, on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I, what I had to do was, uh, it was pretty funny. So um, I had to rent a U-Haul truck because this thing is very big. So the pole itself is uh, eight and a half feet tall. Um, the the pole um, diameter is six inches by six inches uh, square, uh, which is very robust. You'll see like a lot of the um, smaller goals <clears throat> or some of the, the, the cheaper ones. And, and when I say cheap, they're like 750 bucks or $800 at, you know, the big box store. Uh, those are you know, typically a, a four by four pole. If you go to like a gorilla, you're getting like a five by five. And if you go over the higher end gorilla or American Eagle goals, you're looking at a six by six. So six by six, you know, I felt like was the standard for a good quality goal. Um, so that's what I found with this particular one. This particular one was like 50 miles from my house uh, in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. And on my trip there, I was competing with uh, John Deere tractors because it is harvest season here in Indiana. So, uh, to in order to go pick that up, um, I was driving this you know ten foot long U-Haul uh, truck with a neighbor of mine, and you know we're uh, diving around all these uh, U, uh, uh, John Deere trucks, or I'm sorry, tractors, and we eventually uh, got to the place and the location. Uh, took a look at it, and let me show you what I did to uh, to transport it. Uh, and let me talk, talk to you about how I was able to get it transported with most of it together. One of the reasons why um, I went with this goal too was it already had the uh, backboard padding right here. Uh, a lot of the goals that you buy from the big box stores <coughs> or online, uh, the backboard padding is extra. And also this one came with the pole pad. Um, like I said, I have younger kids, so I wanted them to be uh, have a little bit uh, better time and, and, and be safe while they're playing. So, you know, Hopefully no concussions coming off of uh, this pole right here. Another reason why I like this goal too was uh, it can come down to uh, roughly six and a half feet. So uh, while they're practicing when they're really young, it's going to be a really good goal for them to practice and, and try out the sport of basketball. So when I first arrived uh, at the place, you know, I looked at the condition. Um, obviously it's a Facebook marketplace find and the condition was overall really good. There was no cracks in the glass um, that I could see. It was in really good condition. It may need a new net, but uh, the net still works for now. Uh, pretty robust breakaway net. Has a spring here on the bottom. And then also looked at um, you know where the 
uh, bolts jointed the backboard, make sure there wasn't you know visible signs of rust or corrosion. Um, and then I also looked at uh, the base. So the base is also important. <clears throat> so when I was looking at the base, I wanted to make sure that you know the the base didn't also have corrosion. It wasn't falling apart, big cracks. <clears throat> so after all that was good, uh, you know we exchanged funds. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but I got this for 750 bucks. So not a bad deal. Not a bad deal at all. So the first thing we did for uh, transport was I took off the uh, hoop and uh, the rim itself is literally, uh, it's four bolts. If you can see the other bolts back behind there. Sorry for the camera angle. Um, so it's just four bolts holding it on. So I took the four bolts off um, to make the backboard easier to transport. And then I uh, took the bolts um, off the back of the backboard. So here, here, and then up top, um, right about there and there. Um, I put the bolts and all the washers um, back onto uh, the swing arms. Um, so I always knew, knew like where would they would be uh, in, in reference to uh, when I had to put it back together. Um, another uh, good tip would be to take pictures so you understand how everything comes together. But then I left the, the rest of it um, as is <clears throat> just because I didn't want to take it uh, fully apart um, so I can put it back together a little bit easier. So that's what we did. We took the backboard off, took the rim off, and then um, the pole is mounted by four bolts, uh, anchor bolts, down to the ground. And I'll talk about that here in a second. But then, uh, you know, we transported the uh, backboard and rim into the U-Haul, and then we put the um, actual um, base pole right here. Uh, we put that on a dolly, made it easier to transport, save the back, and uh, we put it into the U-Haul, transported it to uh, the house. The next thing I had to do was um, uh, I contacted um, Rhino Sports, um, who actually, um, is where the goal is from and I was able to get in hold of the uh, the guy that owns it <clears throat> and uh, he gave me uh, really good directions on how to uh, install it so I had to um, create a 14 by 14 inch square he said you could also do a circle uh, a 14 inch by 14 inch square uh, concrete hole uh, that's 42 inches down so the hardest part about this whole basketball uh, setup was actually digging the hole. <clears throat> I highly recommend that you get the uh, uh, a spud bar, and I'll show you what a spud bar is in a second, and a post hole digger. Um, I initially tried to do this with just a shovel, um, but my life um, was not easy. Um, so I, I eventually got a spud bar and a post hole digger, and it made for easier work. Now the reason that we went to uh, 42 inches below um, the surface was uh, for frost heave. We didn't want this basketball goal to move. So his suggestion is to go 42 inches uh, down with a 14 by 14 inch square concrete uh, block. So here's a, a video of the uh, spud bar. It's roughly about 30 pounds. It has a um, an angled end on one side and it has a blunt end on the other. And that helped break up the clay um, as I was uh, digging that hole. Made my life a little bit easier. <clears throat> and then uh, here's all the shovels that I was using. Uh, this post hole digger right here, um, that's with the red handle. Um, that made my life a lot easier than uh, just a shovel. You can see how muddy it was. So <clears throat> the next thing we had to do was mix the concrete. So um, everyone suggested this uh, high strength uh, quick Crete. I picked this up at uh, my local big box store. Um, the biggest uh, thing that they said to look out for was this uh, strength requirement right here. It's ASTM C387, ASTM 387, uh, and uh, they suggested this for uh, the basketball goal. So that's what I went with. I ended up picking up uh, nine bags of uh, this Quick Crete. I ended up using eight and a half. Uh, but uh, make sure you pick up a little bit extra. You never want to start laying concrete and run out. So uh, here's a quick crete that we use for our project. After filling the hole, um, 
about three quarters of the way up. Um, we also put um, four pieces of 36 inch rebar uh, into the hole with the concrete. So um, I knew where the bolts were gonna go. There's gonna be a square. So I ended up putting a, a diamond um, pattern with the rebar uh, all the way around. So there's four pieces of rebar in here. And then added some more concrete, put my two by four form on, uh, which is pretty easy to do. Um, and then built my form uh, around uh, the hole. And then I uh, filled the concrete all the way up to the top. Uh, once I got to that point, um, I took my J bolts, uh, which are these right here. Um, these are roughly 10 to 12 inches long. Um, it's a uh, pretty robust uh, J bolt. It's, I think the socket sizes are like 15, 16, so they're pretty big. Um, <clears throat> but this was recommended from the uh, owner of the company. Um, he actually even met me at my, ha uh, my place of work and dropped these off for me because he knew I was going to do the install uh, myself. So, um, picked up the uh, bolt pattern, um, which is eight inches um, square. So eight inches, eight inches, eight inches off my 14 inch um, concrete pad here. And then uh, put the J bolts into the cement. Uh, try to finish it off as, as clean as possible. My concrete work isn't the best. I'm just a DIY guy. So, um, and I let that set up and I, Here's another thing to make your life a little bit easier, was I made sure that I measured, let's see if I can lift this up a little bit. I made sure that I measured uh, from here to, to here um, to make sure that the basketball goal was gonna be square with the driveway. So I wanted to make sure that everything's gonna be square and level. Um, so that's a, another thing that you wanna make sure you do is make sure that um, you're square with your, your playing surface, is to measure the edge of the uh, goal itself to the edge of the, the playing surface. To that, uh, you know, you might be antsy, you want to get this thing uh, in the ground as fast as possible, but uh, make sure you let the uh, concrete cure. So I let my concrete cure for a total of three days. Um, if you're trying to understand the how to mix your concrete, <clears throat> there's uh, lots of videos on YouTube on how to mix concrete and what it should look like, but um, essentially it should look like thick oatmeal uh, once you're pouring it in. Um, and then with my temperatures a little bit lower than optimal, um, you know, I was in the uh, high 50s, low 60s most of the days with some rain. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the concrete cured enough for uh, the, the weight of the goal. <clears throat> so the next steps um, were uh, pretty easy. Like I said, the hole was the hardest part. Um, I put the, uh, the post in, um, got that in, bolted that up, made sure that the, the post and the goal itself was going to be level. Um, so, you know, double, triple, even quadruple checked my level um, as I was tightening all the bolts down. Um, and then came the uh, fun part, which was uh, putting the backboard in uh, while it was a little bit windy yesterday. So luckily I had a neighbor walking by uh, that was willing to help me out. Uh, we were able to get the backboard on. Um, I used a uh, extension ladder to help hold the weight um, and then somebody else to hold it. So it was like a three person job um, and my wife had to help me. And, She's like eight months pregnant. So she was like holding the backboard to make sure it didn't fall on us. And then my other neighbor and I, we lifted from the side and uh, we held it up while each other, uh, we put the bolts in to hold the weight. And then it was a matter of uh, climbing up uh, another ladder to uh, get the bolts uh, on the top back on. So once we got the uh, backboard on, uh, then we put um, the rim itself on. I took a level, uh, put it on top of the rim made sure that before I tightened the bolts down that the uh, goal, the rim itself was level. Um, so then after that was level, then tighten everything up. And then um, after that was done, it was literally just putting the uh, pole pad on. So um, buying a, a basketball goal from Facebook Marketplace is, uh, you know, may seem a little intimidating, um, but if I can do it, you can do it. Um, Facebook Marketplace, I saved probably more than half of the cost. This was a $3,000 goal, brand new. Uh, you know, I paid less than a third uh, of that price. Um, plus, you know, renting a U-Haul, getting some cement. Also, to have somebody else install it, that is an option. You can buy one on Facebook Marketplace. Um, there are local places that'll install your basketball goal for you. 
Um, you know, you can research and find those locations in, in those places. Uh, but they're going to charge you anywhere from $400 to $700 just to install your goal. Um, so I did it myself uh, in supplies. It was, you know, less than a, probably 150 bucks because I had to buy the, the spud bar and I had to buy the pole hole digger plus all the cement, uh, rebar, J bolts. So um, I think I did a pretty good job. So I was able to get a $3,000 goal. Uh, I installed it, uh, bought it for a third of that cost. And I think it's in really good shape. And I believe my kids are gonna enjoy the heck out of it. So <clears throat> I think next uh, I'm gonna get something called a yard guard. Um, if you see my previous videos, I'm pretty passionate about my grass. So I wanna keep the kids and balls off the grass as much as possible. Um, I'll do a video um, installation uh, on that when I get it. But essentially it's a net uh, that goes behind uh, the basketball goal. It protects the ball and everything from going into the yard, into the neighbor's yard. Um, and uh, the kids can spend more time uh, shooting hoops as opposed to chasing their balls in the grass. So uh, that wraps up this video. I hope you liked it. Um, like I said, you can find some really good deals on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I like looking for deals all the time. I appreciate you watching. Jason Wicker, DIY Dad, and I'll catch you in the next video.